Who? My brother. Who? Oh, when Enrique was on the pod last week? Yeah. Yeah, dude, he crushed it. He did way better than me? We were actually... You were being planning like... On, you were planning on booting me from it? It was like, like Brandon, we Brandon who? I yeah, started to tell you, but... It was like Brandon who? What are we even... Who dat? <laughs> I, I guess we got the shit end on the, uh, the stick with the brothers. Who dis? <laughs> get the good brother except for his fucking comments about will smith i went back and thought about that a little bit more and i was like indian Ind- independence day man wait yeah. he, wait he he likes will smith or no, he no, no 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 he like he didn't say he didn't like will smith he just said he jamie fox was a better actor than Will. he kind of said he didn't like will smith though a little bit i like i really like will smith but i will say i will agree that jamie jamie fox is a better actor i disagree wholeheartedly think so yeah. Yeah. After going back and looking at, it, there's just not. And I told your brother the same thing. There's just not enough like volume. He doesn't have. I as I, much. Li- I like Will Smith way more. But if I'm like basing it based on, ba- like on their actually, if you have more ability to act, if so you like, have more okay. roles, then like it might be a better argument. And that's what I told him. Well, I was do like, do you do it off of range or personality? Because like, well, like the range is there on both of them. Like I went back and looked at like both their like. Movies. They do have range for sure. Both, both of them have good range. Yeah. He, his argument is that Jamie Foxx yeah, has an... You might be right, though. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, dude, Will Smith doesn't just do the goofy dude. Yeah. yeah he, you might be right. He was saying he's, that he's Will Smith's some, an entertainer. He's got some, like, Pursuit of Happiness was a fucking... Yeah, that yeah, was... and your, yeah, your brother said he didn't like that movie. I, I love that movie. Yeah, it was good. That was a freaking tearjerker. Yeah. They did well, that like, movie Seven Pounds. You see that one? Yeah. That one's really fucking sad. That, that one's was too sad for me. Jamie Foxx was I don't like a, that movie. He also was up for a different... I don't like sad movies. <laughs> I, I totally forgot about the movie, but he was up for a different award, too. Yeah, Seven... And then there was... Uh, what's that movie? Uh, I Am Legend. That was good, too. Yeah, that was, that was a real good movie. Some good acting in that. He played Muhammad Ali. His, uh, the Aladdin doesn't look good, though, to me. Just from what I've seen, mm-hmm. I heard a lot of people that went and saw it. They said it, he does a really good job. He does a good job. Like clearly, it's hard to bat like follow Robin Williams, yeah. but he does. He takes it into his own. Yeah. He doesn't try to mimic the style. He makes well, it his own, which it makes be, it good. It know? wouldn't be his fault. I would think it'd be more like the storyline, the different. I don't know. He looks goofy as fuck. It, yeah. Like, yeah, it's. I weird. don't know if he collateral. Could... That was the other one that uh, Jamie Foxx was up for an award, um, supporting actor. He was good in that one. Mm. You remember that? that was said, a, is that the CTE one? No, no, no that's, that's the, concussion. You're thinking. Of. Oh, that's this yes. is Jamie Fox. It's the one. I think it's Tom Cruise. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Um, mm. he's the cab driver. Tom Cruise like going around like being a fucking psychopath. I I think Will Smith got more range though, but I think Jamie Fox does. Um, I think he does a serious role a lot more than. Will well, your Smith brother's does. only argument was his award for he got Ray. An Oscar for Ray. But it's like he's a musician, Ray, so Ray, Ray was pretty good. But he's a musician, so he got so to embody so that Will a little Smith, bit more. Technically, <laughs> come on, Fresh Prince. Come on, not really though. I see him more as an actor than as a yeah. musician. No, right. for sure. Most of his. I good... see both of them more as an actor than a musician. But like, I mean, yeah. getting jiggy with it. Come on. Summertime. Miami. Summertime. Ha ha. he does it. The man in black. Every does his little. Yeah, lo- laugh. Uh, yeah, I'm more of a Will Smith fan personally, but. Wow, wow, Wes. Will Smith's actually one of my like. He's probably. I don't know if I want to throw him in the top five actors for me, but he's. Just on the outside of that. Just on the outside of the five. The top five. Yeah, I'd say the same. He's like. I'd give it to him. He's just missing the top five. He's just done so much in our lifetime. That's why, you know what I mean? I mean Men like, in Black's yeah. one of my favorite movies. Yeah. All right, so we're just fucking winging this podcast. Probably I got the than... notes up on the screen. Oh, shit. Well, it's really fucking far for me. Whatever, fine. Is that better? Can you read that? Good enough. I don't give a fuck. You... I don't even read this show notes. I just, like, let you lead and I just follow off of it. Thanks. 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 Well, we know you use the show notes to put for, like, the... The description for the episode. Because so. I'm lazy, I don't want to write something out. So that yeah, I don't. It it just, just helps boom. you do two things. Two birds, one stone. I remember. I remember when I heard that for the first time. Two birds, one stone. I literally visualized it when I was a kid. It's fucked up, man. Like killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. 
you were throwing the rock at two birds. No, I visualized it when the, like my it was Did like you... my first grade teacher just said the expression for the first time. Like we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. And I was like in my, when I'm like whatever six years old or whatever yeah, yeah. that was. I literally visualized it, and I was like, it's so mean. You just throw a fucking rock at two birds. Did you do it like my favorite James McAvoy film? And Curve the, curve the curve, Bullet? Curve the Rock. I do straight line, bullet through all three of them from the office. Yeah. I, if I had two bullets, and it was Toby, Bin Laden, and Hitler in the same room, <laughs> I'd use, I'd kill Toby twice. Oh, <laughs> God. Dude, I just wa- I've been watching uh, The Wire. Yeah. Have you watched it all? Yeah, I've seen that series. Dude, that was I like had never like I'd started watching it several times, and it was so sad when uh, what's it Michael B. Jordan's character dies. Oh yeah, that was like really sad. I was like, damn, that show's really good. Yeah, it it's is. It's a really good show. You know what show I started watching? Which one? Game of Thrones. Damn. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? It's good. <laughs> It's good. I I can't wait. I I just want to watch it. Just want to keep watching more episodes. Good, huh? It's good. It you yeah. gotta. It's I like, mean, season one. You gotta co- like make an effort to remember who the name of each character is, so you can yeah. understand. You can follow along better. Yeah. So it's season one. I think we're on episode nine. It's at the point where, uh, Tyrion, the short guy. Yeah. Yep. He met up with his father, Tywin. Yeah. And then Rob and the banners or whatever all got together so it's like the next episode seems like there's going to be a war all right i heard the end of season one gets pretty intense yep yep so I'm dude every you. every they fucking just throw you through a fucking loop like right out the gate because yeah. you just think like oh shit this you you're thinking a character is going to be in it for the long haul and then they just my favorite so far and you're like what the fuck favorite people so far are the dothrakis Okay. Yeah, they're like the Khaleesi, most Khaleesi, and Khal Drago are the dope, is... are the dopest people so far. Yeah. She's, so and you like that scene where she's getting pounded from behind? That's what you're. That's what you're all about. <laughs> Whoa, dude! First ten minutes, man. First ten minutes. <laughs> we're, we're not even recording yet. We are. Well, this isn't for the pod. It has to go on the pod. I'm talking about Game of Thrones. That's what sells. No, it doesn't. What sells? Uh-huh. La- I looked at the notes. It says Brandon's trip to Cancun. That's what's leading off. So <laughs> once you ask me about that, that's when I know we're starting. Fuck your trip. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck your trip. <laughs> I want to talk about Game of Thrones. But yeah, no, she's badass so far. Um, can't stand the Lannisters at all. I just want. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's what. Yeah. That's what hooked me into the show. I want to kill so all just- them. Um, Joffrey, you, so you, far, have you met, have yeah. you met Joffrey and Joffrey, how much of a fucking he's on the throne right now. Joffrey's on the throne, and uh, people I hate can't stand Sansa, Sansa, whatever her name is. That, that won't change. And Jon Snow, John I'm Sh- not a fan of her. Well, I, I mean, like, obviously, she does a good job acting, but I just don't like her character. I think she gets she great knows. at the end. She, she's probably yeah. like the best character development in that entire show. Uh, I wasn't, and uh, also Jon Snow. Not a fan of Jon Snow so far. Jon Snow. I like Jon Snow. He's I mean, like, maybe it's like the hype around him, and he just hasn't done shit. I just don't understand why he went just, to the wall. Like, I just it. don't. I don't get why he went to Jon Snow. Snow's like my so, favorite character. Like everyone else would had to be like was so, forced to be there, but he, he like the thing isn't, and like they, I'm not. Anything, I'm not spoiling but, anything. Yeah. Like hit, like it's not his birth mother. No, and I she, get. That. She doesn't want him there. She, I get she's that. never loved him as a son, and he feels out of place. So he wants to go to the wall where he can be his own person and, you know. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah but, I guess that makes sense. I just don't get it because then there's that other guy that's from the Iron Islands. I don't know his name. Oh, Theon? Yeah, Theon. So he is adopted, kind of. So they like him more? No. That's what I'm saying. Like, he gets to go with Rob you'll, everywhere. Well, but I mean, the thing, you'll like, you'll, you'll learn how the show, <laughs> like, know. how they really, how they treat bastards. Like, right. bastards are, like, bastards. Like, they, they get somebody treated did, like bastards. Yeah, somebody did tell me that that the Tyrion. bastards are Tyrion. are real low on the wall on the totem pole and the lowest the ones from the north their last names are snow and then like the ones from the east or something else like sand, sand or yeah. something yeah so oh it's good so far i'll keep you guys updated yeah you, you got a long ways to go i got a long i got a long it's gonna to go. take you all summer to finish it probably well, well, i did it pretty fast he's already nine episodes deep and he started last week yeah did you fuck that's that's commitment. I did. I did the same thing, man. I binge watched the fuck out of that. Hustled show. through them. 
That is It's hard to stop watching. It is the cliffhangers are yeah. so good. And like if it's if it's there for you, like why not? Well, yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, you can Yeah. Well, you know, I got to I figured if I start now and I you know, finish sometime in the summer, it's perfect because then in reality winter will be coming. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's fucking do it after that terrible dad joke. I dropped two F-bombs. Brandon's only dropped one. I did one. Okay. That's right. I'm leading the pack right now. That's right. Fucking put that money in the (laughs) (laughs) kitchen. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Let's start the show. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Episode 51. We are one Three Amigos and a podcast. We are one episode away. Home stretch. It's our pod anniversary next week. I oh, can't wait. I can't believe we've been doing it for a year. It's crazy. It man. feels longer, though. I feel like we've talked a, about a lot of stuff. We have. There's been a lot we've of developments. One really crappy Padre season. Yep. And now we're on Made one it through a Super Bowl. Pretty good one. It's- it Made just, it, we've, this is our second NBA Finals. Second Stanley Cup. That's right. This has been... Uh, yeah. There's, there's just a lot that happens in sports, so you go back through your memories and you start thinking of all the things that have happened in one year. Who would have thought and last... there's just a lot of stuff that happens in the course of one year in oh, sports. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought last year Tiger Woods would have won the Masters? Who would have thought yeah, you know, last we, year... We, we talked last year about how you know he was so close, he was on the cusp yeah. of like you know doing something great, but he was just falling short and... Everybody questioning, you know, is he going to make it? So a lot can change in a year. It's awesome. Yeah, who would have thought that last year Manny Machado, you know, is on the trade block to either go to, like, the Yankees or the Dodgers for the postseason mm-hmm. run. Or, and then end up with the and fucking then Padres. And then end up with the Padres yeah. in the next season. No, what definitely. He, yeah, I mean, I, I would have probably bet my entire life savings he's but, not going to the Padres. 100%. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially after he went to the Dodgers for that yeah. playoff run. It was like, okay, Well, and he made it very apparent there. that he's like, I don't want to play on the West Coast anymore. I want to be close to home. Yeah. And like when you're a free agent, you literally, that's the only time that you have a choice. The ability to say those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, San Diego. God. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, honestly, if I'm picking any place, I'm picking San Diego. Oh, definitely. Well, save the memories, save the nostalgia, because we got to do a, like a throwback episode next week where we just cover everything. How long do you think we're going to record for next week? Dude, it'll be a while. So... Everyone that's listening, if you want to come out, we're doing it at the Ballast Point in Linda Vista, off Linda Vista Road, the tasting room. Uh, we'll be there from like 5 to 8 or whenever. So come down. You can have a beer. And if you want to step on the mic with us, feel free. We'll have an extra mic, so we'll rotate people in and out. So Yeah, come on down. It'll we'll be a see good how time. it goes. Absolutely. That's right. We'll, we'll see how long we record for. One of the fourth for. amigos going to be there too, right? Our, Mr. Uh, Chudzinski. Oh, was, I was going to say Enrique. my brother, Enrique. I would say he's, he's an honorary. He's an honorary. Yeah, Enrique. both the, those are the two. I don't know if I want to, uh, no offense to Enrique, you know, he just has his own podcast, his own brand. But he's like, still we can't, a part of the Amigos. Yeah. We can't be like, you're both. I mean, dude, like, he's the reason we got our beer, the hats. Look at this. That's true. Look at this. That, he's, that's he's true. He's an honor. If there's somebody that's deserving of an honorary Amigo, it's my brother. Did you just take that hat off? You thought it was the one? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was pretty Well, funny. you were taking the hat yeah. off, so yeah. it just inspired me to, like, look at my hat. I was like, oh, that's right. I didn't bring the three Amigo hat today. That is very true. Enrique does a lot for us in our podcast and the promotion of our podcast. So, yeah, I would have to give him the fourth. You're, That's yeah. right. You're right. All bad podcast. Yeah, all bad podcast. He was filled in for you last week. That's right. Miss he, you, though. I mean, he you know, uh, didn't talk a lot. I mean, he's filled in, I think, probably when you have stepped out, too. So yeah. he's kind of been that honorary amigo. I know Chad's kind of stepped in a couple times. Enrique's but... the, he's in the hole, you know? Yeah, that's right. He's, he's ready to step up to the plate. If he's needed. the sixth man of the year. There you he's, go. He's getting that. But anyways, as uh, we were talking about in our little pre-intro intro, Brandon, trip to Cancun. Oh, God. Yo soy Cancun. Yo soy Cancun. How'd it go? Yo soy had fantastico time. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, uh, I think that's the, the closest we've actually been to Amigos. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty no, bad. That, that was an amazing trip. Um, shout out to Dama. She coordinated just about everything. It's awesome. And 
you can surprisingly do a trip to Cancun for really cheap. Um, yeah, we did. Uh, so one of the things that you can do, um, you know, to save some money on your flights is, you know, fly out through TJ, the yeah. TJ airport. So you done can that weird. Yeah, you, you've done it. So you've done that CBX where you cross over. Yep. And you save a bunch of money. You do. Um, different though. T- take Valeris. I think we paid we did like, Valeris. Yeah, we we paid like two fifty for both of us. I think. Wow. Like, nice. And that that was a steal. And then we stayed. Once we got there, we stayed at this hotel called Terra Caribe, and we stayed there for four nights. So we ended up staying at three different hotels when we were there. How long was your trip? You went for uh, like eight, eight days. days. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we left on like a Saturday morning, and yeah. then left uh, the Sunday before. Uh, memorial day oh. um but uh yeah we stayed there for four nights it was 120 dollars for all four nights wow nice. that was That's a good that was a steal and it was a nice like a nice enough hotel it was yeah. clean um centrally located it was in downtown and there was a bus stop right there so we took public transportation everywhere nice and the way it's set up in cancun is what is that Cancun's on our vacation club, so you know we can go there all inclusive if you want. That's nice. right. The uh, there's the there's a bus. The public transportation's like twelve pesos, which is like seventy five cents. So we didn't like pay for like a rental or anything like that. There you go. So anytime we wanted to go there, the way the bus system, their public transportation's amazing, like way better than it is over here. Yeah. Um, they time their bus drivers and they drive incredibly fast and incredibly reckless and they get you from point A to point B really quick. They're like, you uh, have to make it. We're making we, it. We probably drove, took the bus a dozen times and at most we probably, like if you're adding up all the amount of times that we took the bus, at most five minutes, like go. in total waiting between yeah. all 12 times so they get you down there they time the bus drivers it's really quick there's only one route so it takes you down the hotel zone but uh yeah had a great time there we took the ferry over to there's an island off the coast there called isla mujeres and uh you know we took we rented a hotel there right off the ferry and uh yeah it was pretty uh pretty awesome um really affordable as well i think it was yeah. about the same amount it was a little bit more uh the place but it was really nice, and it was in the north side of the island, which is where all the beaches are and everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was right next to the ferry, so we didn't have to carry our luggage long. And uh, that was part. I, I think that's if I would go there again, yeah. I would spend all my time on that island. Um, and then maybe a couple couple days, we went to Chichen Itza, which is like the pyramids that are over there. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like a like a an amusement park type thing called Escaret, which is like a it's like Sea World on steroids, basically, where it's okay. like, like you have like a lazy river, you got like a bunch of like water activities, a beach, and everything. There's, there's like a bat cave that you could go into, and there's no partition between you and the bats. Oh, and it's dark as hell. We went down there, and I was looking. I'm like, where the hell are these bats? Did you become and, the and Batman? No, and you couldn't see anything. And I'm like, you can like kind of see a little bit of light, but. Um, we kind of got, we just got really surprised yeah. when I f- actually saw him and I like, was like, Whoa. And the, it scared the bats and they started charging at us. <laughs> <laughs> like, and there's no partition to block you yeah, from the yeah. bats, but yeah, there's like a, you know, there's Damn. a, there's a butterfly exhibit there. There's, um, you're like in like, uh, the, the, what are those, uh, atrium or, uh, yeah, yeah. A- aviary, aviary. aviary. Yeah. Um, and you're just there with like a bunch of birds and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, but and there's an all you can eat buffet too. Definitely yeah. a lot of fun. You could do Cancun on a, on a on a budget. We spent big on a lot of drinks. The margaritas there are probably the best margaritas I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm not a big margarita fan. Like I, you've known me, I not yeah. like I drank so many of them on that trip. It was amazing. Damn. I just like would sit back and like, Dude, this is the life. This is good. Awesome. Life yeah. life is good. So uh, back. There's parts that I missed, you know. I missed my coffee in the morning, like good coffee. I missed my dark horse coffee. That's my <laughs> go-to spot. And uh, came back. That was the first thing I did, you know. I got to get me some dark horse get coffee. Some dark horse. Get you going. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's good to be back. Good ba- good to be back with the podcast. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're yeah, going to celebrate I mean, that one year next week. Yeah, glad to see you're back. Um, 
I'm not going to lie, we were both a little concerned for you because we didn't see any social media activity. As sad as our world has become, we're just like, is Brandon, yeah. is he going to post anything? Like, what, Dude, what's I he don't doing ever, out there? I don't, you know me, I'm not like a big poster. Yeah. But, huh. uh, big, poster. big poster. Yeah. But yeah, it looked like you guys had fun. It sounds like you guys had fun, so mm-hmm. it's a good trip. It's, yeah, you can, I mean, you could probably do two people for under a thousand. Like, Damn, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's like, it, that's definitely a possibility. Um, we sprung big on like food and drinks while we were there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you wanted to, you could do that on the cheaper end and then you cut your cost considerably. Yeah. Well, how about you, Ryan? How was your weekend? Your week? Well, I got pretty drunk on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's, we did. Went to little Italy. That was, that was... I saw that post. You guys, you guys had like a, a day you guys were day drinking or what? Yeah. yeah. Started pretty early. Yeah. Ended started pretty, pretty early. early. <laughs> ended early. Freaking yeah. conked out, dude. Yeah, I dude. swear. God, we're getting old. Yeah. It, I mean, I cracked open my first beer probably like, what time did you come over? Like one. One. So probably like 1230. Cracked my first beer. Went, you know, I had a few here. Went down to Little Italy. Um, went to Bolt Brewery down there. It was pretty fun. Met up with nice. Dean's parents and Matt's parents. Yeah, that was cool. Um, Is Matt back in San Diego or? No, he's back in Connecticut. They got back from their honeymoon. Like same time you got you came back. Nice. Yeah. Um so it was a uh, it was a fun weekend. Yeah, it I was. I feel like I was recovering a little bit Monday still. So I wasn't hung over, but beer just hits me, man. Yeah. It was it was it was pretty brutal. Yeah, I mean, but I I don't have the patience for hard alcohol. That's why it's like I'll I'll drink beer all day cuz if I'm drinking like whiskey or mixed drinks, and I'll just run right through them and all First of a sudden of all, I'll be you don't trash. You, no mixed drinks. Come on, Dean. Get your get your head out of your ass. Well, you, you can not sip on some for, bourbon or whiskey for a little while. You're not going for like a whiskey ginger, some like Jack and Coke. I don't want to taint my whiskey with with ginger ale. Because well, sometimes unless you don't have the most. Unless high it's end. like a crappy whiskey or something. I don't yeah. know. I do bullet and ginger ale. Yeah, bullets like I feel like bullet is like a necessity for like mixers. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty potent. Like it's it's strong, but it's bitey it's not it, it's not my favorite bourbon oh, wait no i'm thinking of makers makers is a good one for mixing i like i can drink bullet straight i used to uh, always look down on people when they would put like they'd order a margarita and then they put like the high uh, end tequila. yeah they put they'd put some like uh um patron in there or something like that and you're like really you're already you mixing good, it up if you have a good margarita it, it like you know one with like fresh lime and stuff uh-huh. like that like it, it's it's well, good plus like the high-end stuff less hangover yeah definitely it's, i don't know it's filtered but, like, better when, when i know? when we were in mexico i drank like i started the first three days like pounding margaritas and like i was like oh my gosh my stomach's not gonna be able to take this the rest of the trip so i i switched up and i went to like belvedere with a couple limes and some uh club soda there you go. Like, this is this is refreshing. It's the can, white woman diet. Do, yeah, for sure. The white woman diet. For sure. But I was like, I could drink a lot of these oh, and yeah. it's not gonna kill me. Vodka water with how, some lime. How yes. was your weekend? My weekend was good. I mean, like Ryan said, Sunday, out drinking. Started watching Game of Thrones. So you know, overall successful. Played MLB for a while. MLB, Ryan, let me borrow <laughs> MLB. I've been playing that all week. It's basically what my right. I, I came in work life I, has been <laughs> has been dedicated to. I came into seeing Dean just like not breaking his concentration playing the game when I came in. So um, I told Brandon this when he came in. You know, you can set your nickname. Yeah. So I said it to Big Daddy. Oh yeah. And Sunday <laughs> oh, morning, yeah. Sunday morning, <laughs> Sarah walked out and I was at the plate and he goes. And now up is Dean Big Daddy. And she was like, really? <laughs> <Just like that. laughs> Big Daddy's got to eat. I had to change it. It was just getting too creepy for me. It's yeah. Weird. Hearing my name and it's somebody calling me Big creepy Daddy. Nickname, like, oh. to be honest. It, it, real creepy. It's really creepy. Real creepy. Well, not, not a good one. Wait till it's called Big Zaddy. No. No. According to Alex. Alex, stop it. <laughs> Alex. Nope. Daddy versus Zaddy. <laughs> Still don't no nope. go we're, don't go over the difference no nope. we're not we're doing skipping this skipping right through that one next <laughs> on to thank you next <laughs> yeah we can do yeah I, yeah i went area on you i'm gonna do nhl first yeah definitely let's do nhl nba and mlb will take up a good portion of what we're gonna talk about I just figure we got to get these out of the way you know get them hit them early, hit them early. um so yeah 
NHL Stanley Cup playoff or Stanley Cup finals, sorry. Game two was, I guess it's coming out Friday, so Wednesday. Uh, the Blues tied that up in an overtime game, uh, tied the series up 1 1. So that's good. Uh, a lot of big hits in this game. At Saw first, that, man. At first, it was kind of like, you know, you know, Blues, Bruins don't really play each other a whole lot. They don't really have a history. Um, but, you know, they ended up game two hating each other, which is excellent to see in any kind of physical sport. You know, you want to see that competition. So that's really going for them. Um, the Blues, though, I mean, they're taking a lot of stupid penalties. Uh, that first game, they started off fast, but in reality, they just kind of – the the puck was down below the zone. It was like – back blue line turnovers that kind of led to those two goals, which, you know, that's not really the blues setting anything up. That's Boston just fucking up in real reality. So as long as Boston doesn't make those mistakes, the blues really haven't gotten anything going on their offense. They're taking stupid penalties. Their power play when they do have the power play, hasn't been performing at all. Um, Boston has one shorthanded goal, which is just, you know, that's ridiculous in the finals. Um, and you know it's just i don't know so game three (laughs) is uh saturday they take two days off they're gonna go back to st louis so you know i think st louis needs to win these games at home to have a chance if they can go if they can take both these games at home and go up three one on the series they can definitely win one in boston so if St. Louis does take the two home games. I see it going six with St. Louis winning it. If they lose one of these games, I could see Boston winning this game in or this series in in uh, in six. So you're taking who? Who's your pick though? I mean, I want St. Louis to win because I'm I'm just tired of Boston. I'm tired of them of winning everything. You fucking you fucking kidding me? You keep winning. You can't win everything. (laughs) What are you, a co-op? I'm not a co-op. I'm not a co-op. Yeah, no, fuck Boston. I mean... Hopefully we don't have any Boston listeners. You know, I'm okay. Matt, Matt's listening. Yeah. I'm okay with, like, the Patriots. I, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of done with the Patriots. Like, I've, after I've been this done year, with the Patriots. After this year, like, like I'm tired of seeing you win, too. Everything in Boston, everything in Massachusetts, like, go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> I'm done with it. Uh, you know... Bruins doing good this year. You had uh, the Celtics in back to back, or is it back to back? Eastern Conference Finals this year? No, no, no. no but playoff runs mm-hmm. three years ago. Did they make a playoff run too, or just who the Celtics? The Celtics. I feel like they've been uh, no, in the playoffs two, two years. Yeah, straight. so two years in a row. They were sucking for a little while, but yeah, yeah so two back. years in a row now they're back in the playoffs. Obviously, the Patriots. Enough's been said about that. Red Sox win the World Series last year. Like that's just ridiculous. They had a pretty. The Celtics had a really disappointing. They're trying to go for the trifecta, man. I mean, it's it's. I'm tired of it. So you know what? Get the fuck out of here. I'm taking St. Louis in six. St. Louis in six. You know what? I'd actually take St. Louis in five, winning on Boston's home ice. I think that's how it's going to go. All right. So that's my that's my take. on NHL. Brandon, you were out last week. You remember how to do this? How do you do this? You just start off just talking about some so you, sports and some you put, teams. You and put that scores. thing you put that thing in your mouth. I mean uh, close to your mouth. No, <laughs> just 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 nice and close. Just, nice and close. Just lean just into it. Really close. God dude, that's gonna be so creepy. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be editing that. You know what? You know what I can't stand? Are those ASMR videos. Have you guys seen those? I don't even know what you're talking about. All right, we're doing an ASMR video on the surround sand after this. It's I hate them. I can't stand them. It's like somebody has a really high-powered microphone. They turn the gain all the way up, and then they like you can hear every smack of their mouth, and like people That's eat gross. food, and it's just like it's gross. That does sound awful. We'll watch one after this, and you guys can be like, "Yeah, this is terrible." Anyways, all right, take it away, NFL, or NBA, sorry. NBA, well, uh, Eastern Conference wrapped up last week. Um, to my surprise, the I really thought the Bucks were going to you know, make it to the uh, NBA Finals. Nope. I was wrong. Nope. 
The Bucks, who had never lost, uh, I think, more than three games in a row all season, wow. lost three games in a row. Wow. They four. lost four straight, actually. Sorry, and I had to Wow, you they on didn't that lose one. three in a row all season? Yeah. And then in they the had playoffs? The best, they wow. had the best record in the NBA. They were dominant all year. And dude, then, yeah, dude, it, it was a perfect crazy, matchup. The, I mean, it came down to Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard has... Let's just put it this way. Kawhi Leonard's stock is at an all-time high. I don't know if he's he ever been is rated as high as he is right now. He's basketball player in basketball, or in, in the NBA right now. That's that's definitely up for debate, right? Like, I, I feel like it's not even a debate. Like, if you look at, like, and not to say, like, there's no argument. Obviously, there's always an argument. Yeah. But, like, if you look at, you know, Kevin Durant, his injuries during the postseason, LeBron James not having a full healthy season, being surrounded mm-hmm. by trash, you know, Steph Curry, he's – been playing phenomenally this postseason, but, you know, takes a backseat to KD during the regular season. I mean... Plus, he's still a little bit more one-dimensional. I will say this, because I know right now the discussion... I mean, LeBron, he's already established himself as the best player, but he's not... He's on the decline of his career, in my opinion. I just don't see it yet, though. That's my only thing. It's like, I don't see, like, him from a physical and from a basketball standpoint actually take... I I get the age factor, LeBron. LeBron. Oh, yeah. I mean... I see the age factor, and everybody always factors that in. Everybody does that to Tom Brady every year, too. And I've, I've been, you know, I've done that to Tom Brady plenty of times. But it's like, we look at the age, and so we see, you know, or, like, we're imagining that they're going to get worse... But their numbers are still the same. Their he, contr- contributions yeah, to their at, teams are still the same. You look at Kobe; like Kobe was the same leading up to it. In those final two years, when he suffered well, those injuries, all of a sudden it was like hard. hard yeah, it was like yeah. off the cliff hard. Well, it's I, like think, a, I think so, I mean, LeBron's game will age well. He's just not the aggressive guy that he used to be, and that's because he's getting older. And there's well, and I'm think, not trying to take anything away from. Him. That's why I said he's still, in my opinion, he's still number one. And then it's you know. KD and, and, and Kawhi are fighting it out for number two. Yeah. But and and, Gian, and Gian, Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he still has to work on his shooting to yeah. be in that discussion for me. But uh, I, and, I, and he's, he's my vote for MVP this year. So I'm not sure. like... I'm not no, I to, totally agree. Um, but MVP doesn't always go to the best overall player in basketball, though. It goes, it goes to the guy who... Who had the best pretty, season. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It was the guy who had the best season. I, and I totally agree. I think and he led his team to the best record in the, con- in the NBA. And so... Um, but, uh, you know, circling back to what we were saying, you know, Kawhi Leonard is in that discussion for best player in the NBA right now. And he was yeah. never, he hasn't been in that discussion. He's been, he's you know, been a top, part of the top, top tier. Like, he's yeah. been in the top, top five. He's like, been the top tier, but right now he is separating well, like himself. All NBA defensive player for, well, like and I think that's the part years, of it, right? man. Like he does everything like he's. You're never going to question him from a defensive standpoint. He's like, like he the, is, in my opinion, he's the perfect player. Yeah, he, um, he's the he best. Does everything no, right, one hundred percent. And it's just crazy. You think about, you know, we watched this guy when he was at SDSU, and he didn't have a three point shot. You know, he was obviously a phenomenal player. You know, the Pacers drafted him. You know, shipped him off to the Spurs right. You know, on draft night, mm-hmm. and I don't think people realize the the you know work ethic and you know the time that he puts into his game to perfect his craft yeah and you know he's developed a jump shot he's a he has the ability to stretch the floor he assists but you know just as well as any other forward in the league um i mean i don't have enough like good things to say about the dude he's the best two-way player by far in the game 100 percent. and you don't have a lot of that in this nba like this day and age yeah Yeah. that's something that's gonna hopefully you know go over well against the the warriors because you know it's hard to d them up and if you can you know, shut down a team right now without Kevin Durant. I mean, if they can steal a couple games, then yeah, they'll this be in a good spot. Yeah, especially without KD. I mean, I know the Warriors are still stacked. They've done everything. They, they did so much without him on the team. 100%. You know what I mean? Previously, four, four straight wins, man. I mean, I well, mean, not only that, but I mean, then, like in previous years, like these guys on the team prior to KD, they've have great chemistry because they the, they've come up together. They're the best record in all of so, NBA history. Yeah. So this is like a good segue into obviously the NBA Finals. Now we start Game One today. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Raptors up 12. Yeah, Raptors are up right now 12. I kind of think they're going to, I had said it before, I, was, I thought they were going to take game one. Um, I just feel like they have a lot of momentum on their side right now. But um, with that said, um, the Warriors have never been this vulnerable in this run. Like, you date back, even when LeBron beat them with that 73 win season, I would have still taken the, that, that, I would have rather played against that Cavs team then than this Raptors team right now. 100%. And so I think 
this is by far the most vulnerable the Warriors have been. I think we're going to start seeing the decline. Yeah. Um, but I still, I still think the Warriors are taking it in seven. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's going to be a really great series. It's and a dog this fight. is, it's this a dog is, fight we haven't sure. had a great yeah. series since that seventy-three win season for the yeah. for the Warriors. And uh, I mean, if you look back at that too, I mean, obviously LeBron James huge factor in that championship run. But Kawhi, or um, Kyrie Irving was a different animal mm-hmm. when he was playing for them that year. Um, it's, I mean. Cavs were a great team, but they weren't as deep as this Raptors team. I mean, you look top to bottom, and there's not a guy that you don't want out there playing. You know, mm-hmm. at least twenty minutes on that roster. Yeah. And They're deep, and they have they have guys who've been there and won it too. Yeah. So you got a lot of them. So. I'm rooting for Marc Gasol, man. I mean, I feel like that dude. He deserves. He went it. through a lot in Memphis. I mean, he stuck through it for as long as he could. And the opportunity for that man to play for a championship is something that I, I hope he can capitalize and, on. Yeah. And Kyle Lowry. I mean, there, there's guys on that team that have they've been so close, and then LeBron's kind of been that, that roadblock for them. That yeah, the, the mental the, block for The them. city of Toronto needs this, too. You know, the Maple Leafs, in, the, in their uh, Stanley Cup run in atrocious fashion. So, yeah. you know what I mean? The, the city needs it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. So it'll be, yeah. It'll be good series. So, predictions? I, I mean, uh, I already kind of said mine. Yeah, I think the the Warriors taking it in seven. I do think Raptors home field is going to be important in this series. Um, and I really don't see, you know, they brought. I think Cousins came back today. Let's see. Yeah, Cousins is back today. KD is traveling with the team, which is a good sign. Cous- Cousins logged eight minutes so yeah. far into the game. Which, He's not going to get a lot of time. I mean, so. they, they've been winning without him, and I, I feel like eight minutes is definitely enough to just. You know, get him out there with some of the alternates for the the Toronto. He's a better matchup for a lot yeah. of those guys. Um, I, I also I can see the Warriors in seven. I think it's going to be a close series. Um, I mean, I'm I'm rooting for Toronto. I think it would be awesome. Uh, I think Kawhi deserves another ring. You know, just to kind of cement himself as a top NBA player of all time. All uh, that suffering too. Just I mean. I really, I would love for Toronto to win this. Um, yeah, I don't know yeah. if I don't know if they have the power. I think tonight they're going to awaken the beast of the Warriors because the Warriors have. It's been easy for them to win championships because they have so much talent on that team that they don't have to like really play on, yeah. at their best to win. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, and and now just, they like if you look at like the Cavaliers, the year that they beat them, and obviously the years that they lost to them. I mean, they tried to play the same game as them. Yeah. They went after it the same way that the Warriors did, you know, catch and shoot, mm-hmm. try to move the ball, you know, quickly down the court as fast as you can and score. Toronto's they're not they're not going to do that to you. I mean, mm-hmm. they have the ability to stretch the floor, but they're going to d you up and they're going to mm-hmm. make you beat them. That's mm-hmm. what I like watching with this basketball team. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, that like there's other teams out there that would have played just as competitively, but you know, nobody has the edge right now quite like Kawhi does, and I feel like that's gonna Kawhi stretch. can shut down any player. Yeah, absolutely. He has the ability, and, that, to. and that's the thing. I mean, and that's where the Warriors are dangerous because you know, if you know, KD's getting shut down one day. If he if he comes back in this series, you know. They he still will. got Steph Curry. They still got Klay Thompson. Mm-hmm. You know, Draymond Green's not a scrub. I mean, we forget about him. He showed up big time in that last series. Yeah. No, yeah. he 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 will have to show up, I think. I think he's right now they're trying to just test it like, well, we don't want to rush you back unless we have to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if they fall down in the series, he'll come back. And, you know, they're gonna lose game one today. And if they lose that game two, I could see him coming back game three. All right. You got well, you. You have any predictions, or are you just kind of? No, I mean, uh, I was just gonna. You know, what are the odds, or like, what do the Raptors have to do to either win this early? Like, is there only chance if, if they take it early, or they don't take it at all? Um, kind of. No, you know what I, mean? I don't like, think if that's they the extend case, the yeah. series. Are they just you know? Kawhi's just gotta. Kawhi's gotta keep up his toward pace throughout the series. Yeah, and it's tough. It's it's, a, it's a tall. It's a tall order. That's, yeah, that's what it is. Like the way I would look at it is, Golden State is obviously the favorite in the series. The more games that it goes on, the more chance, the better chance the Raptors have of creating the upset. You know no, what I, I mean? Think, so, I think the the further the series goes yeah. along, the the more the favors, more, the more it yeah. favors the Warriors. If, if the if Toronto can you know win the first two games, you know that gives them a huge upper hand they need because then it's yeah. you know win two more and you're you know you're home free. The issue that you run into, and Brandon mentioned it, is that they are a beast. And They're, you wake they in don't the beast. lose. They don't lose well. Like they come mm-hmm. back angry, mm-hmm. and they come back with a vengeance, and they come back hard. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it it's a lot to ask. I mean, it's it's not like they're getting blown out of the water tonight, but it, the the Raptors have been handling them pretty well. They've been up the whole game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're up nine, ten points right now, but, I mean, it, it hasn't been, you know, going back and forth by any means. So, yeah. you know, if they can come out tomorrow, you know, it, it, championships aren't won by, you know, blowout games and ten-win victories. I mean, you have to win the close ones. You have to hit clutch shots. So I think that's what it's going to come down to, winning the games at home and – you know, stealing one at, you know, Oracle Arena for, you know, the last hurrah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it'll be a good series. Hope so, man. Yeah, I think think this is going to be the first, you know, NBA Finals in quite some time where we're going to be like, yeah, this was a good series. Yeah. Um, yeah. Evenly matched teams, I feel like. Um, It's nice to see another team coming out of the East. That's That too. All right. Well, let's talk some baseball. Let's get into some Padre talk. Road trip. Uh, Padres going on that little road trip. They went to Toronto first, and they were in New York. Yeah, they hit a they hit a few home runs in that series. Yeah, I think so. They had about seven in a game. I was sitting there and I was like, "Damn, Brandon's got to go to Cancun more often because these bats really wake up when he's gone." Dude, I mean, Austin Hedges alone was he gets just back like, and he was like, goose "Finally, egg. he was like, finally, yeah. this guy's gone." Hits his first career yeah, grand that's slam. Right. That's right. Dang. There was some big home runs. Will Myers' bat kind of woke up in that first series. And yeah, then, fuck him. And then uh, Hunter Renfro definitely mm-hmm. woke up. Um, see who else hit home runs because there's a few multi home run guys in that game too. Renfro hit a couple. Myers hit a couple. Um, my goodness. Uh, yeah, there was Kinsler seven. Well, there's one. Nineteen. Set, Nineteen runs. It was in seven that game. home runs. So Kinsler hit one. Hosmer hit one. Renfro hit two. Myers hit two. Hedges hit one. We, you had mentioned Hosmer. We were roasting him early in the year, but my God, that guy's come around. And he well, I is feel like we were our best him. player right now with the bat. Yeah, we were roasting him early, I feel like, because feel like we, we were just expecting him to get off to a hot, hotter start. I, thought, like, so I, I, I feel like it wasn't much of a roast. It's like, you know, it was just we like, know it's on. coming, but like, let's let's go. Exactly. Yeah, because we know that he's an every other year guy. Yeah. He's like, you know, that 2010 to 2014 We knew it was every other year Giants he got off player. to that really slow start. And we were like, yeah. come on, man, come exactly. on. Exactly. He's turning he's around. Like, his approach is a lot better. He's mm-hmm. a lot more patient at the plate. He's getting his pitches to hit. Um I mean, I I can't say enough good things about the guy. He's he's really turning it around, and he's he's a leader on that team. He mm-hmm. really is. Like you see it in every, whether he's picking a ball, getting it, throwing around the horn, you know, telling everyone like, hey, we can keep doing this, yelling out the plays, leading off the you know the rally charge. He's been doing it all, yeah. dude. He hit that three run shot against the Yankees in game two. That literally that yeah that hit probably won that that won that game for us. Yeah, definitely. No, I uh, and, and you know, I thought you know we talked about it last week on the podcast, but Josh Naylor getting the call up this like past that. week that was awesome. He just missed that home run too. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, and you saw, and I know, like we had talked about it last week. We don't get into the, the depth that is the Padres minor league system, but he's a guy that I've been looking at for a while. Mm-hmm. He's got a smooth stroke. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that he plays the same position as the best fielder. You know, not on our not necessarily on our team, but probably the best fielding first baseman in the National League. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know he went out there and he do he did well. I mean he you know obviously you yeah. know he didn't get a fr- the hit the first game, but he got went out there and got one the second game. He's a Canadian uh, guy too, so yeah. he got a chance to play in front of his own uh, yeah. you know home crowd and his country and yeah. So he delivered too. Yeah, man, it was uh it was nice to see some of our young guys get up there, get the opportunity. You know, I, I know we're gonna start seeing that more and more as the year goes on. Um, and it was nice. They they actually had him playing right field. Um, I know Fran Mills coming off of some knee issues, and they didn't want him playing on the Astro turf. Yeah. Um, which you know I'm I'm all for that, preserving that these end guys. That was the DH too. Which by the way, man, it's nice to finally have a team that can yeah. field a DH. It was tough because yeah. we we talked about it last week about how we would love to see Fran Mill out there, and we did see him more when they went to the Yankees. Um, ballpark, but it was a bummer. He was hurt because yeah, you could have seen not, it, not, you it, seen it, it for a whole trip. It wasn't that he wasn't porch. hurt. It was there was it was preventative. You know, he, they yeah. said after the first game, you know, him running around on the Astro turf, whether it was in the infield or the outfield, it just wasn't yeah, right. It wasn't good for him. Yeah, it's bounty, man. I don't know why they still have Astro turf out there. It's ridiculous. I played one game or a couple games on Astro turf, and it. I mean, in baseball, it's totally different. Yeah. It really is, and that ball comes flying off AstroTurf. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. those ground balls, those things are screaming. Yeah. Does not slow down at all. 
Yeah, because in I mean in football, like it's more of a constant. You're you're always running. Um, well, not always. You know, you stop. But, but you know, during the the you know the game, you're moving. But in baseball, well, it's like, more like it's plant and go, and it's mm-hmm. sprint. Yeah, baseball, you kind of yeah can lollygag around a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but it was a it was a good series. Obviously, the Yankees. You know, we got we stole one from them. Um, got skunked the next time. Paddock got knocked around a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's gonna happen throughout the year. Um, I'm interested to see what they end up doing with this rotation, man. I know they got some of these guys on inning limits and. It'd be nice to see him start stretching these guys a little deeper into these games, maybe take some pressure off the bullpen, but I really think they need to go to a six starting pitcher rotation. That's the only way this team's going to stay competitive this year. Yeah, I agree. They just need to extend these guys' days off. Yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? Like They need to add that extra day in between. Well, a lot of these guys, like I know Strom, he's not like known as a, a no. guy who's going to go deep into games and... I mean, Lucchese and Lauer have shown that they could. They have the ability but to they do haven't that, done, but they haven't had the success to be able to do yes, it. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's and the biggest issue that we're running into, is our guys that are supposed to be stretching the innings, going a little bit deeper into these games, aren't putting up the numbers that and we need. And you're not going to do it with, with Paddock, because Paddock's coming, off, coming off Tommy, Tommy John, John. so you got to protect the arm, especially of one of your best pitching prospects that you've had in quite some time. Yeah. So I, yeah. you know, I I agree with you guys. You know, if they did a six man rotation, I think it would be really good. I noticed Lamette is looking like he's on on the mend, and he looks like he might be returning soon yeah. to Nelson Lamette. I'm hoping, man, that that's gonna be a spark plug that we need. Yeah, and I know he's gonna be a little bit, you know, cold at first, but dude's got one of the nastiest sliders in the game, man. Oh, he, he throws was a, it constantly. I, he threw like I think 150 strikeouts in his rookie year, and he yeah. only pitched like half the season. So he could have probably led all like in a full season. Probably could have led all of baseball yeah. strikeouts. No, it's 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 nice, man. The depth there is good. It'll be nice to get somebody back that actually has experience pitching. You know, when when they call up Quantrill, you know, I know Logan Allen's going to get called up here pretty soon too. Um, it's always a little bit hesitant as a fan because you're like, all right, it's their first outing. Probably going to get knocked around a little bit. We were we were pretty lucky there at the beginning of the year with our rookies going out there and throwing up some goose eggs, but. It'll uh, it'll be nice to see when we get some arms back that have been there, done yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I didn't put it on the show notes, but you know the the MLB draft is coming up this weekend, uh, Sunday officially. Uh, you know, players get into that realm of not being able to be traded for draft picks, not being able to be claimed for mm-hmm. draft picks. Do you think come Sunday, Monday, those kind of anything? Do you think the Padres and Dallas Keuchel news will come in, come out? Not in, a chance, at all? man. So from what I. Had, well, I had read an article on MLB basically saying that like some of the insiders that you know Padres are a logical suitor for them, but yeah. the fact that we have so many so much depth in the minors, it doesn't really make sense for them to sign a similar style pitcher as some of the guys that we already have down down below for a one year deal. Yeah, um, at least it just seems like it would just be a, somewhat of a waste of money for them, and they could. You know, maybe devote that money elsewhere. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe and it's tough. I mean, he's going to want the years, and the years aren't something that we're he's really going to go with. one year. I think he, but he's come still. out. His agent has come out with saying we're okay with taking a one year deal. Yeah, so I think he's just going to get a one year regardless of where he goes. Mm-hmm. I was just asking that question because you know, where it may be, it may seem like a waste of money. It still is an investment in our younger guys in the sense of that right. adds another arm to our rotation. I, I really can, think our I really think our middle relief is that what's just atrocious cuz there's been times these young guys will, you know, the rotation seems like they're holding up and then, you know, come the 6th inning, 7th inning, we're getting lit up and we're losing games or mm-hmm. they will have a nice comfortable lead and they will cut that lead and then Yates has to be perfect, otherwise we're going to lose the game, you know. Yeah. And uh, that seems to be our script all year. Yates is on, like, a historic pace for saves, I think, isn't he? Yeah, is that, like, 21, 22, yeah. maybe? Yeah, and this is really early. I mean, Did you get one today? He has yeah, more saves up to no, this point. Today. He has more Where saves up to this point in the year than Trevor Hoffman has ever had up to this point in his entire career, and he's second all-time in saves, you know. Yeah. Like that just gives you perspective of how many how perfect he has had to been, mm-hmm. and he's just delivered constantly. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we have to factor into this as well is that it's free agency, and mm-hmm. that it's the player getting to choose where he wants to go. And I think teams out there like the Yankees and the Tampa Bay Rays, and even like Minnesota Twins, who are playing outside their mind right now, yeah, who are point. are not on the cusp of 
you know, pushing for a wild card, but more or less trying to win a division. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's going to be a lot more appealing to Dallas Keuchel than a team that he's going to come in, he's going to be expected to be put in a leadership role, somebody that's going to eat innings, and hopefully we can get to a wild card. Because it's not a long-term deal. If he was signing with the Padres for three or four years, absolutely. But if it's a one-year contract, I mean, he's got to showcase his abilities, and the biggest showcase is in the playoffs. Don't, don't you think, like... Petco Park being such a pitcher-friendly park. But I agree with you. I don't think he's signing with us. But I feel like if I'm his agent, I'm taking a strong look at the yeah, Padres. Yeah, factor in. And be yeah, like, sure. hey, P- Padres are a pitcher-friendly ballpark. You've seen a lot of careers become, uh, you know, revive themselves because they're at, they're playing at Petco Park. Everybody and, but James Shields, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, James Shields signed a four-year deal. He didn't have to work hard yeah. after that. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying with, like, a team that looks ca- like – they could vibe for that number one spot in the division. But you look at those teams and they have their bullpen, their rotation. But I I mean, I mentioned it last week too. It's not about having, you know, two to three aces in your staff. It's about having six to seven starting pitchers that you can have. So you can give people a rest and that you can keep people fresh going throughout the playoffs. And like I said, I mean, obviously for the Padres, it would make sense to get, you know, some of our younger players a rest. And, you know, maybe have them around an elite pitcher. Um, I don't hate the one-year deal aspect of it. I just feel like if if I'm a pitcher and I'm coming in, like, not necessarily halfway through the year, but close to, I'm going to want as long as a a showcase as I can get. And if he thinks that, you know, joining the Padres is going to make them a playoff team, by all means, come on a half a year contract and, you know, maybe that'll push us into October. But if not, I mean... I really think, you know, like a team like the Minnesota Twins, you know, they're looking to add everybody and their mother if they can. Yeah. They're already, they're, I already saw like a number. I think they're like 89 or 90% chance that they're making the playoffs this year yeah. already. Something like that. I Which think, all three of us were wrong because I think all three of us picked the, the Indians. Yeah, I think there's something like 10 games up on the Indians. Yeah, it's ridiculous it's, like that. It's like, insane. They went on a crazy hot yeah. streak. They're playing well, man. They're. Pro- I think they have like... The first or second best record in baseball right now. So this question is just for a checkup. I just want to see if anybody knows, but it, when's Tatis coming back? God. Not, um, I mean, not was, soon enough. There God. was rumors Do saying you know? that he could be back, but he still hasn't even like played in a simulation game yet. It's just one of those things. The injury seemed so minor. I don't know. That to me, in it reality, little... maybe like it, it was worse than we had first Hamstring injuries thought. are tough, man, because those, those can linger, and they're like... With a young talent like Tatis, no, I, I there's get no that. point in rushing him back in a year. No, I get really that. Expecting. I'm just saying, I want to. I'm, I miss him. Yo, no, I know. I agree. Everybody with you. does, man. Yeah, it's been I a just, month. I just miss it's him. It's been just, a month, man. And like, I uh, love you and I, I miss you. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I I totally respect the aspect of of not rushing him back, but I definitely I want to see him out there soon. But I want to see him healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if they're taking the precautions, luckily we've you know have this guy that we pay three hundred million dollars to that knows how to play shortstop pretty well. <laughs> if it didn't leave us with this damn hole at third base, I wouldn't be so upset about it. But gosh, watching Greg Garcia or freaking um, Ty, France. Ty France over there is starting to piss me off. I was thinking, why don't they call up Hudson Potts? He's been killing it down in the minors too. He's the third baseman they draft in the first round. I, yeah, I. I I just feel like it's hard to uh, call up Ty France, give him playing time, and he's not doing terribly. No, he's, he's just playing fine. He's okay. He, he's, yeah. You know what I mean? He's a good spot start. It's just one of those things where it's like, are we really going to get that much better production from a lower level guy? Yeah, than I, what we that's, that's kind of. I agree with you on that sense. I just don't think that throwing a guy in there like out of need at this point is the best thing for him. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. feel like if he's seen, if he's you know, if his numbers are good. And again, and I mentioned it last week, you know, a lot of these guys are trade bait. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. And I said the same thing about Josh Naylor next, let, you know, last week. Hudson Potts is another dude that I think of because both of those guys are playing positions where we're paying a lot of money to people. Mm-hmm. And if he's showing success at a AAA level and he can keep that success rate up, his trade value is a lot higher. Yeah, than bringing him up, seeing him tank. Yeah, and having exactly. Him back down. So I feel like that's, you know, with Ty France – you know, being a reputable third baseman for right now and having the Greg Garcia aspect over there, I would much rather watch Ty France and Greg Garcia. Greg Garcia's arm belongs at second base. 
He's a second Dude, base. Man. Ty France's arm looks like he belongs at first base. Jesus Christ, man! Sometimes it's tough after you watch Machado, though, man. It is. That's it, the hard it's, part. It's, it's hard. Well, like, and, and we were spoiled earlier in the year when we had, you know, arguably the best defensive infield in the, in the yeah. game with yeah. Machado and Tatis on the left side of the infield. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, well, honestly. Yeah, yeah. We, I was just seeing if anybody had a status update. No, I mean there was talks about him potentially coming back this week. I still feel like that's a little far fetched, but I'm I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed just in case. Well, we All haven't right. sunk either. I think we're still second place in NOS. We're only like a game out of the like wild one, card. One spot. whole game out of the wild card. So yeah. I mean, it's not like we're sinking without him. Yeah, and um, we really. Just, I think if he's in there, we're in that wild card. And we have spot like right one now. of the weakest stretches of our schedule coming up too. We have the Marlins, the Nationals, and then obviously we play the Phillies. We're a tough team, and then I think we're Nationals are pretty tough too. I mean, they're they're playing like crap right now. Are they? Yeah, they're they're not doing well. There's like there's been we were talking about it. Me and Dean were people <laughs> like you know kind of like. On the cusp of like wanting to trade Scherzer, and I'm like, no, they're never. They're no, not a bad I'll team. Take Scherzer off your hands, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. They're not a bad team on paper. They just haven't figured it out completely as a team yet. And they have a lot of young guys. You know, Robles, um, who's the other phenom from last year, um, Trey Turner. No well, rookie. He's one of them too. But um, um, sorry, I blacked out. What team are we talking about? Anthony, Nationals. Anthony Rendon. They still Rand- have him no, too. No, no. No, they got a good team. I just I, I I'm surprised they're they're doing as yeah, poorly. They're, they're 24 and 32. Wow. Yeah. I still wouldn't yeah. write them off though. That's still gonna be a tough series. Even though I think we they're took playing, like we I'm, took three out of four from them earlier, didn't we? Juan In, Soto. That's the guy I was thinking of. Oh yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's a stud. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, they're they're a young team. Um, they're, they're not they're not doing bad, but they're just getting out hit, and that's the tough part about it. Like when you're getting out hit, there's not much you can do because it's not necessarily your bullpen or your you know starting pitchers per se but if you're losing games you know three to one four to two i mean those are good pitching numbers but you're not hitting yeah, it's well not offensive numbers yeah we we well, need a stretch like that we play in a pretty tough division i was looking at it you know oh definitely fourth place is a 500 ball club you yeah. know I, the the giants are the only team that are just really the run to the litter you know yeah and you you look over i mean I feel like that's across the whole National League, not our division alone, but the National League is full of, you know, it's a very competitive league. Oh, definitely, you look over man. in the American League and it's like, there's like three, it's like te- five teams. There's like, yeah, oh, three, for sure. three or four teams that are just like yeah. awful, you know? Yeah. Well, no, I mean like three or four teams that are good. Yeah. Oh, no, right. it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's literally, no, it's the Astros, it's um, Astros, Yankees, Yankees, uh, Twins, and Rays. I would put, oh, I'd put Boston in there. The Boston's Red like Sox. only two games over 500. Yeah, though. but they're heating up. But big they're still from their like, they're still start. like a big team. You know what I, I mean? mean? They're like, five and five over the last 10. I mean, they, they got onto a hot streak for a while and then they kind of simmered off. I'm just saying that they have a lot of star power that you're never going to, yeah, you're never sure. going to look away from. I'm just them. saying, like, the fact I'm saying, the like, the Rays, like, the Rays are one of those fringe teams that you're just like, I know you guys are doing really good right now, but at the same time, do I put you in yeah. that same caliber as the Yankees, I have Astros, a, I have Red a Sox? I a hard time you know? calling the, the Rays like a fringe team because they're, they're killing. They're thirty five. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't mean fringe team in the sense of their production level. I mean their power, like it, their their power ranking. Like uh, I'm just saying, like you look, at, look the, at like the Ray, or you know what I mean, the the Red Sox, Yankees, Astros. I think those are like the big three. But the biggest the issue East. that you're running into is that the the Red Sox are a full week of wins out of the division. And like yeah. I know it's like the beginning of June almost, but that's still a whole week of wins. And you're talking about a team like the Yankees and the Rays who are hotter than hell. No, no, no. I get that. I'm just saying, not not season overall, just lineup versus lineup. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if right that now series, we, if that if, series was going to go on against each other, which team are you going to take? That that's in my my yeah, mind. For sure, I would if take we, the Rays. If right we now. took two out of three from the Red Sox, you'd be stoked right now. No, Let's definitely. just put it that way. Like yeah, the, the Red Sox are not a bad team, but I'm yeah. saying in that. In the American League, there's only four teams right now that are actually that's, putting in work. That's true, and but it's definitely very balanced in the NL. I agree. Yeah, you yeah. look at like the National League. You have you know Philadelphia, Atlanta, uh, Milwaukee, Chicago, Dodgers, Padres, Rockies. I mean, I would even throw the Diamondbacks there's in there. Re- because- there's really only like two teams in the National League. You're like you have zero chance at win- making the playoffs, and that's probably the Giants yeah. and the the Marlins outside well, of we kind of knew that going into the season that the American League is top heavy for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look down at the rest of the division for like 
the AL East, you have like the Blue Jays and the Orioles. They're not doing shit this year. Mm-hmm. You know, Detroit, Kansas City, Chicago, um, the Angels. I mean, as much as I always like never never want to write off the Angels, like Seattle's just going to, I mean, they've fallen off a cliff after their yeah, hot start. They yeah. for sure did. And that's like, I mean, it's got to give a lot of hope for the Red Sox. Like maybe one of these teams will do that. <laughs> But it's tough, man. The, well, the, the Red Sox are one hot streak away from coming back, and I feel like they're fully capable of something like yeah. that. Just and that's, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, and that's like, my only thing is that it's just like in a one game playoff for a wild card. Are are you really going to like count the Red Sox out that much? Like no, they've been I there just, before. They're, yeah, they they're obviously got off to that really bad start, and yeah, they're, still, not, they're still in that top tier for the. Like AL. I feel like the Rays and the Twins. Yeah, they're having an amazing season. The Twins is a little bit more luck than the Rays, but at the same time, I feel like the star power for the Red Sox is well, gonna, they, the, the that, Twins that by far playing the softest division in all of baseball oh, by yeah. like a long shot. And yeah, they're thirty seven and eighteen, but. I think you stick the Padres over there, and they're at least up to you know thirty something wins. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like, just for me, it's like I'm not riding off the Rays at all because they have one of the best starting rotations in baseball, and like that's that's no, my biggest thing. Rays are making the playoffs this like, year. It, I think that's a. I think that's going to happen. If it was a one card, one game wild card with Blake Snell versus Chris Sale, then I'm I'm taking the Rays for sure. And it's that'd tough. Be tough. I don't I, know. I, I that'd could, be a good matchup. It, it would be a good matchup, like, but Chris Sale has been terrible this year. Yeah, it's still early though. I mean, I, I feel like early is like a. I mean, if you're seeing like you know a hundred at bats, not, if you're seeing like you know, you're kind of getting a glimpse of what a player's like se- true season is at this point. I'm not saying it's early for him. That's why he's not doing good. I'm just saying his history and his track record proves more than Blake Snell's does. I mean, they both have Cy Young awards. I get that, but I'm saying Blake Snell's had what. Two, three good seasons. Yeah, Chris Sales Chris had a good Sales five or six career. career. Like, yeah. I know. I get what you're saying. It's just I'm never gonna write off like that dude the way that he's been playing the last two years versus the season that Chris Sales had to this point. So no, if, I, if I'm I betting on it, your, if I'm yeah. betting on it right now, I'm no, taking I, yeah. the raise. I definitely get your point. I'm just I think that ball club to ball club that the Red Sox are a better ball club than the Rays. Overall, maybe not right now, maybe not right now, or maybe not in, you know, they these did, last they couple were months, the, they were the world champs last year. Let's not forget that too. That's my only thing. And they didn't lose a lot of pieces. Yeah. They're just I on mean, a cold streak. I, I but, do think it, if it were a one game and playoff. And they are in a tough division, you know, with the Rays playing so well, like it kind of, you know, and the Yankees are filling every hole that they can with all the injuries. It's kind of surprising how, that they're doing that good. I don't know good. how the Yankees are doing it right now. I, I don't either. So I, uh, I know they're a heavily analytic-driven team, but it just seems like yeah. they, they smoked the Padres with Kendry Morales playing in the, the hole. Like, he's their three-hole hitter in that, that series, and they smoked a 7 nothing. Like, yeah. <laughs> God, it's just insane. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I will, I, I, you know... Come you know August September, looking at where these play where these teams are laying, you know I will definitely be surprised, and I will definitely give you major props, Ryan, for if the Rays sit in this position all the way through. I I'm kind of in the same boat. Yeah, that's just how that's just how I'm seeing it. It's just too like, early in the year. We're not. We're I mean, like, but, but you're making good points. No, and I'm and not like, saying my, you're my wrong. last point that I'm going to make too is that the the Rays have given up a hundred less runs than the Red Sox all year to this point. So if we're if we're looking at like overall like you know if we want to dive into record fine you know maybe they got lucky for ten of those you know wins or so but if you like dive into the true aspect of what this team is doing overall I mean one it's hard to repeat yeah. two it is you hard got to repeat. a team full of young studs in a game that is kind of trending younger and J D Martinez was a freaking crazy person he's playing well this year he's batting like just under 300 i think like 10 or 11 there's home there's no runs. way he was going to replicate what he did so last that's what i mean year. like I, if i look at like the red sox last year like they played outside of their freaking mind yeah. and everybody was on and if you have to redo that in order to win i would bet against oh yes i would best bet against that and, but, but let's just just counterpoint to the you know runs against for pitching uh uh boston has a better batting team batting average than Tampa Bay. Oh, for sure, two sixty to two fifty. So I mean, you know, what I mean, like they're still they're still but, getting but, hits. They're putting the ball in play for sure. But their bullpen's do letting you, them down. Do you have so, the Red Sox making the playoffs at this point? Oh yeah, 
I mean, okay, as a wild so card I just team, wanted to know that. I, it, I mean, honestly, and but, I will love not seeing the Yankees in a wild card game again. The Yankees are. I mean, it's still too early, but they're probably going to win that division. The, the Yankees, when they're healthy, I feel like are going to run away with this. I feel like you know them being a half a game, you know, ahead of Tampa Bay right now is a little bit of a fluke because they haven't had a full roster out there yet. And if they can I don't go know out, how and, they've been doing it, Paxton just smoked it, us too. If they can yeah. go out and add a player like Dallas Keuchel, or even go out a relief pitcher like a Craig Kimbrel, somebody like that to just cement themselves, like they it'll be done. I would rather the Padres go after Kimbrel than than Keuchel, wouldn't you guys? Yeah, but Kimbrel want Kimbrel wants. He wants a lot. He wants. He years. wants a lot he of wants money. A lot of money. A hey, lot. I mean, I want a lot of money too, but doesn't mean I'm going to get it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. So one of these teams might desperately pay him. Yeah, but that's what's tough. I like, do think relievers are in more demand than like come trade deadline than starters. Yeah. The the biggest issue the Rays are going to run into is the spending, and the Red They'll Sox never and the Yankees are going to spend if they need to. You know, if yeah. we're if we're at the All Star break and the Red Sox. Are still probably sitting, you know, or not probably, but if they're still sitting in the same position, just on the cusp of, you know, a wild card or you know, six games back on a division, like they're gonna go out there, they're gonna trade or they're gonna, yeah. you know, sign whoever they can in order to make that work. Yeah, and, and the Rays can't do that financially. And like my last point with, the, with that battle is just, you know, the bats for Boston have been there more than the Rays. The Rays oh, have definitely. better pitching, and down the line. Pitching just needs to turn around for Boston. Yeah. They have a great, they have a gar- great tough, rotation, though. not a really deep bullpen, but they have a great well, rotation. Well, like David so. Price, man, like that dude's been a freaking joke. Like, like I mean, yeah, Chris, I, I really like, I. It's one of those things where you kind of like with Eric, Eric Hosmer and like Manny Machado and those guys. Like you were just waiting for him to turn around, and it's like Chris Sale. You're like, dude, like you're one in six. You have a, yeah. an ERA over four. Like, what the you hell is to- going on? I mean. It, it's tough to watch, and if I'm a Boston fan, like this would tick me off just because of the amount they went at, like gave up. Because all these dudes, like you know, like, traded for these people. Like you gave up very valuable prospects yeah. in order to get these dudes, and they're not producing the way that they're supposed to. Yeah, especially for Chris Sale. I mean, like that dude. I mean, hitters are out there talking all the time about he's the hardest person to hit off, and like phew, not this year. Not this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I have a lot of faith in the Red Sox. Like their lineup alone, like. They should be able to turn yeah, around. Yeah, if their bats keep going, I was just looking up some other numbers. So their average is better. They have more home runs, more, you know, obviously overall hits, um, more RBIs, more runs. So it's just... Yeah. The biggest downfall is that they have to play each other all yeah. year. That's the, the, the biggest knock is that, mm-hmm. you know, you have three teams in a division that probably all deserve to win their division, and they have to, you know, fight that's, it out you against That's a double-edged yeah. sword, though. So if they win those games, they're right back into it. So yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, and I know that the the um, Red Sox game against the Yankees was postponed. They have a three game series against them, and then they are. Let's see. Oh, I thought that was the last schedule. God damn it! It's still yeah. it's it's early as hell. It's yeah. er, it's I mean, really it's early. early. We're at like the, we're at the third point in the year, right? Yeah. We just yeah. barely passed. But they the do. They get and... they get New York. Then they're on the road against Kansas City, and then they're back at home against Tampa Bay. So you'll kind of get to see an idea. I mean, in like seven games, there's seven games right there. Yeah. So I mean, if you're the we'll Red see. Sox coming out five and two or four and three, that's you know a win. That's, that's in the right step direction. In the right Absolutely. Direction, yeah. Well, all right. Let's uh, let's move on to some NFL. Right? You got some NFL news for us. I'm taking in some uh, fantasy football. There we go. You know, for my my not so enthusiastic NFL fans <laughs> over here, I figured the only way I can get you guys to listen to some football is if uh, we're talking about something that involves your bank accounts. Yep, the bank account. So, a couple different points I wanted to bring up. Um, a little bit of a, a top five for overall draft picks this year for everybody. So, if you're drafting drafting within the top five, some people to look at, and then maybe a few people to avoid. Um, number one, I got this year is Saquon Barkley. Okay. I mean, the dude is going to be the workhorse if it's Agreed. Eli Manning or mm-hmm. the damn dude from Duke out there. Duke. Whether he's throwing it to him or whether he's you know running the ball, like he's gonna get vo- sheer volume. So if he stays healthy, he's for sure my number one. Ezekiel Elliott, number two. Again, if he doesn't have his little suspension or whatever, yeah, he'll be fine. Um. You know, again, sheer volume. They don't really have a backup running back there, so he gets his touches. Um, next, I'm looking at Alvin Kamara, um, a dude that is multifunctional. He's not going to have 
uh, Mark Ingram there anymore, so he's going to get a lot more carries. Did they, didn't they add a running back, too? Yeah, they did. I can't remember who it was. Um, <laughs> my number four... But, but probably that, that same Mark Ingram vein of workhorse in the short yeah. short yardage, yeah, he's you know what the, I mean? Third down back kind of thing. We saw Kamar carry for a little bit mm-hmm. of the year last year, but I don't think he could do it for a full season. It's just yeah. too much for one back. Dude, I Honestly, with the way that these dudes put up numbers now, catching the ball out of the backfield and running the ball, like, oh, yeah. we're, if we're talking about fantasy, like they'll put up massive was, amounts of points. He like, carried my, my work league. Uh, yeah, fantasy team. Well, and you got to remember, Drew Brees is going to spread the field as much as he can, so it opens up for a lot more yardage underneath for the yep. running backs. Um, my number four, shockingly, probably to most, would be Melvin Gordon. Um, he deserves it. Dude, to be honest, last year he threw down. Yeah, yeah, and I just think that the, I mean, obviously the loss of Terrell Williams is going to hit that offense a little bit more. Um, you know, with uh, you know, they ha- they want to run the ball. And well, their yeah, offensive and line this year, they're older or they're you know, they're getting a little they, more veteran and they have a couple old guys inside, but they're right yeah. their their left guard and their tackle were no, still No, they're yeah. they're or young. Their they're left young. guard and right left guard, right tackle were still Okung very young. Is the, yeah, Okung's the only like true veteran on that team and they have uh or in Pouncy. In Pouncy, yeah. Um so I can see them trying to move the ball a lot more on the ground this year. Plus Hunter Henry's back, he's a good blocking Hell tight end. Freaking so. yes. And then my number five, um, I know, and this is probably a popular opinion, leaving uh, Todd Gurley off of this list. Um, I'm going James Conner. Um, I think, you know, oh, okay. ha- the Steelers' offense always produces. Um, not having Antonio Brown there is going to be pretty massive for them. I can, and he, He's another running back that showed the ability. Um, my notable mentions will be David Johnson and Todd Gurley. I just don't know how Todd Gurley is going to bounce back from this injury. Where do you see Le'Veon Bell falling? Well, my only thing, my pick before we go any further is I see you left my boy Christian McCaffrey off your top five list Dude, and C- honorable C- Mac no, deserves to hey, be in there mention, too. It's, so that's he's why. another honorable mention guy. Okay. Um, it's dude. Christian McCaffrey, like the only knock that I have against him is that they don't give him the ball at the goal line. And that kills me. Like they did it a couple times last year, but it's not. He's going to get it more this year, though. I maybe, so. maybe. But he, the, the he issue, beefed up. They, they yeah. And that's him. the thing is, it, like, if they start giving him the ball, then like he's like probably my number three. I'd probably swap him from. Um, I move Melvin Gordon down. I move uh, Alvin Kamara down. I'd probably scoot Christian McCaffrey up there. But like from a fantasy standpoint, right now. That's my only knock is the not okay. getting the goal line carries. I, is this, this is what I love about fantasy right now is it's a really deep running back league. Right? And oh, they for sure. just and eat up the points. And that's my that's my favorite position to draft is running back. Oh, I, yeah. I like have made it a rule that I draft a running back every year in the first round. Oh, well, first two for yeah. me, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, at first two if I can, yeah. um, unless. I have to take yeah. a wide receiver. So that's my that's my second question is uh, who's the first wide receiver you go, you see going off the board? DeAndre Hopkins, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, I think that with Will Fuller and obviously Deshaun Watson going into his third year, um, he's going to get a lot of balls thrown in his direction. Um, I'd say Julio Jones would be my number two, with Michael Thomas being my number three. Do you, where where do you see? Do you see either OBJ or Jarvis going top? And if so, which one do you go over the I other? I would go with OBJ over Jarvis Landry you have unless, to. unless you're in a PPR league. Because mm. Landry gets a lot of balls thrown yeah, in his direction. Yeah, he does. He gets a lot of those underneath routes. So if you're in PPR, Landry probably slightly above OBJ. Baker Mayfield stressed me out a little bit because he hasn't shown the ability to stretch the field yet. So if he can come back year two um, and work with these wide receivers, get OBJ into that freaking field so they can start working on you know OBJ is yeah. probably still going in the second, late second though. Yeah. I feel like and then uh, those, Antonio Brown, I'm I'm not drafting him till probably the third or fourth round. Um, yeah, somebody yeah. else gonna reach for him, and I'll let him reach for him. But I'm he's got to prove it, man. I'm not like if David I, Carr's got to prove it. Yeah, to it, me. It's Derek not, Carr or Derek Carr. Yeah, yeah sorry, uh-huh. same shit, different brother. Yeah. Um, My only thing with the the two Browns wide receivers is like it could go one of two ways. Either one of them could pull like an Al, uh, uh, Adam Thielen type season where it's like one of them gets covered and all the whole time, and I don't know which one it's gonna be, or it's gonna be one of those like I could you see, know it's gonna be totally like it, it's gonna be one of those New Orleans Saints wide receivers yeah. from like 
a couple years no, ago. Definitely. Where you're like, which one am I starting? It could be like a Viking situation though, where one guy gets the yards, one guy's get the one guy gets the touchdown. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it might work out. My players to avoid. Um, and this is also running backs. I'm, I'm trying to keep this to a little bit of a trend here for you guys. Okay. Um, my first one, Dalvin Cook. I mean, yeah, it didn't show a lot last year. Injury Not looking prone. injury prone. I mean, they're clearly a pass heavy offense. Somebody that I probably avoid. Um, Leonard Fournette. Um, this is personal, purely personal. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Um, again, available in the second round. Maybe reach for him. I'm thinking more like the fourth or fifth round, to be honest with I, you. Yeah, he's probably more like a back end two. Maybe like a yeah, like a maybe a third round, like a yeah. high third round yeah. for him for me. The other one for my boy Dean over here, um, Deontay. Fr- uh, Devonte Freeman um, should God. be one of the best running backs off the board. Yeah, um, you know, obviously the loss of Tevin Coleman is going to free him up a little bit more. But I mean, fantasy impact. If you're looking, you know, top three rounds, those are people that are supposed to be putting up the m- amount of points that you, you know, win you the big games. I don't see that from Devonte Freeman. Um, and then my last one is going to be Damian William, or sorry, Marlon Mack. Um, Oh, the Colts, the, the running, Colts back? running back. I just feel like Andrew Luck's back, and they're not looking to run the ball. God, I can't wait for fantasy. I feel like that one's just team. that one's just hard because the Colts O line is so it's beefed young. up. It's young though, and that's the biggest issue. Is you're you're looking at like the defenses in that division. Yeah, they have to play the Raven or not the Ravens. They have to play um the Texans. They have to play the Jaguars, and those are some beefy defensive lines. So just uh you know position players first off the board quarterback and we Pat Mahomes we looking there we oh, looking dude, Deshaun sure. Watson we looking I'm still not drafting Patrick Mahomes in the first round I mean if anybody watches football or plays fantasy football do not waste a first round pick yeah, on a not, quarterback n- no and Never. uh first tight end taken so this is actually going to break into my last segment of my fantasy, and this is the rookies to watch this year in your NFL draft because I know okay. y'all don't pay attention, so I'm trying to give you a little spark plug here. All right. um, You're Noah helping Vant. out your own competition. I know, I know, I know. This Noah, is for the people. This Noah is for the Vant people, and TJ you. Hawkinson, are, put them high on your draft boards. You heard it here first. Put them high on your draft boards. Those are going to be dudes that are going to come in and produce right away. What was their names again? That's Noah Vant from Denver and TJ Hawkinson from Detroit. So they're both rookies. Um, Detroit loves their tight ends. Detroit loves their tight ends, and Joe Flacco wants his his crutch. He wants that person that he can get the ball to, and he did the same thing when he was in Baltimore. I look for him to do the same thing there. Dennis Pitta, that um, was his boy. McCole Hardman from Kansas City, you know, Tyreek Hill. See what happens there. Basically, anybody Patrick Mahomes can get the ball in his hands, I would probably draft that guy pretty high. All right. Um and then my last rookie, um, Devin Singletary, running back out of um, Buffalo. It's still a fringe player. It's not a guy that I would look to draft high. But if you're looking to stack the roster a little bit later in the draft, he's a guy that I can definitely see them getting some carries from. Um, not a whole lot of running backs on their roster, um, but definitely somebody that looking out for the lower end of your draft. All right. Well, I'm excited for fantasy. That I definitely. Was just say, I was like, I love, I love draft night. I'm probably like gonna do this is... for you guys, like, I don't know about every week, but every other week, I'm gonna try to put some fantasy stuff together. Um, I just don't want you to get mad if you know, no, it's available it's, for us, dude. I mean, we're on the, the what? If like the player's available you know, for us, it's like I don't want. It. You no, know, we're in the sixth not, round. I don't want to have to. I take do remember somebody. us having that discussion when we did our our fantasy uh, picks. Yeah, before the season, so, like, well. We have a gentleman's agreement. We can't take so the I'm gonna guy. I'm going to say no more gentleman's agreement <laughs> well, this I, year. It was like Devontae Freeman, and it was like the seventh or eighth round. No, was, it was uh, it was Royce Freeman. Royce Freeman, Royce there you Freeman. go. And yeah. it was like deep, and I was like, dude, I, I mean, I need Best a bench. thing, no more gentleman's agreement. We're all talking sports here. I know you guys don't get enough, and if anybody that can knock off James, take my advice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> James is just, uh, he's got a little bit of a mini dynasty going right now. Yeah. Well, all right. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Brandon, you got our stat of the day this week? That is. Let's it's, do uh, it. Stat of the day, stat of the day, da ba ba doo stat of the day, dad of the day. Here comes that what? 
Stat of the day. Bop. It's NBA related. Okay. And uh, I know you guys are not huge NBA guys, but I'm sure you guys can appreciate a, a crazy stat. Um, you know, with Toronto Always. making the uh, with with Toronto making the finals this year, uh, Danny Green is actually on that team, um, and he uh, actually used to play with Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, back I saw in the this day. one. Yeah, the, it's been thirty six straight finals that a teammate of Shaq's has played in the NBA finals. So thirty six straight years. A team, a former teammate of Shaq, has made the the NBA Finals. Dude, that's crazy. That's such a long. That's period a of long time. time. Like, like <laughs> that's such a long time. And you got to think, like, is this Shaq's the last been out of year? the league for a while too? Oh, yeah. It's like, is so, this the last year? How many? Nutty. How how much longer can 36 we go? Thirty six years. Like, there's some deep roots there. He's got to get on a team that's going to make the playoffs next year, just like as a coach, just to be like, just to keep that that going, just, that just, going. just to keep the streak yeah. alive. Yeah, that's a pretty impressive, you know. That's a long streak to time, have. and you know, I dropped that Vado stat, and then the next this year that stat breaks. So I'm pretty sure you're next the, you're year the stat I'm going to break. I'm going to break this stat. I'm oh, calling man. it. <laughs> and then whatever next stat I come up with is going to break the following year. All right. All right. The stat breaker. Stat breaker. It's your nickname. That's right. Well, everybody, we are the Three Amigos and a podcast. This is episode 51, the one right before we turn one years old. So, you know, come out next week, have a beer with us, get on the podcast, whatever you want to do. Um, we'll be there. We already, out. We already yeah. got a little bit of nostalgia in this episode. I feel like it's just like the a small taste of what's to come next. Next next episode we got to do like our favorite moments or something that that we've predicted or something like that. So get get thinking. We got to start right. getting we got to start thinking and if any of the listeners want to drop us something, you know, yeah. some something they want to hear. Yep. You know, we certainly would welcome that uh, little bit of advice. Yeah. Well, everybody, Three Amigos in a Podcast. Find us under 3A. Recommend us to everybody that you know. And uh, we'll be back next week. See ya. Later.